Hey everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Real World Rehash, brought to you by SWORD, the superior world of reality discussion. Tonight, we're lucky to have from Fresh Meat 2 and a lot more of the MTV challenges, Brandon Nelson. Yay. Don't all clap at once. <laughs> I'm actually really, really excited to talk to you because you're one of my favorite people from the challenge. So well, I'm excited. You. Well, good. At least one of you likes me. We all like you. No one dislikes you, trust me. Everybody likes you. Well, good. <laughs> okay, so I have to ask because I really, really want to know, and I really hope you say yes. Are you going to be doing any more challenges in the future? If they ask me, I'll be there. Um, so that's pretty much all I can say about that. If they if they hit me up and say, hey, we want you, I'm on the first thing smoking. Yay, I'm so glad to hear that. So you have done quite a few. You've done five challenges so far. And out of those five, which one was your favorite and why? Um, I would probably say Cutthroat was my favorite one. I, I actually got to perform and do stuff on my own. Uh, even though most of that performance was in the in the elimination rounds, which kind of sucked, but um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, I would say cut though. I mean, I really we were in Prague in the Czech Republic, so I mean, I really liked that place, and um, the format was a lot better for me, I think, because uh, I really got to you know show what I could do, even though they kept using me. But I mean, I think that was kind of like my coming out party, because you know, fresh me too. Mm -hmm. I had cake, didn't really get to do a lot, um, so coming back on Cutthroat. It was just I like the, the the people we had there, and you know even though my team were a bunch of assholes, uh, it still it still is one of my, my my better moments I think on that one. Right, one of the things that I do hate about the challenges is that they tend to go after the newer people. Like me, I would want to go after like people who've done this a lot and know what they're doing, like the veterans. And you were. Like always targeted so early in your challenges, and why do you think that was? I don't know. I mean, I think I kind of it kind of played against. I played against myself. I think um, being, you know, so understanding or, or just kind of being too laid back. Because um, like my thing is, I go into it like I got a job to do, so I'm not there to kiss ass and to play the games that they play. As far mm -hmm. as um, you know, in the house and talking talking shit about each other and planting seeds and stuff like that. Now, if I do get back on, it, you're going to see a different side of Brandon. But um, I think they didn't really – they knew that I wasn't going to be, like, all bitching and crying about mm -hmm. being thrown in. So it was easy for them to do that. Plus, I was still fairly new. Uh, so I think it, just, uh, it, it was just easy for them to do it the way they did, and I didn't help them. Um, I, did, I didn't make it any harder on them. I made it easy on them to, to pick me because – I'm like, all right, well, cool. I get to go do some more work. That's how I looked at it. But nobody wants to go into elimination. Like, it's it's the shittiest feeling to have because yeah. I mean, you know, you don't know what you don't know what you're getting into. Sometimes you don't even know who you're going up against. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, you want you one step closer to that plane, and nobody wants to do that. So we have a fan question from Andrew Kirk, and he says, what happened to your podcast, Real Talk with Brandon, and do you plan on ever bringing it back? Uh, Andrew, that's the homie right there. Um, I do. It's just I've been kind of all over the place. Like, this this year has been a really weird year. So as soon as I get settled and, you know, both feet on the ground and one in front of the other, mm -hmm. I'll probably um, mm -hmm. – Get that back up and popping because the the, uh, the website is still up. Real talk with Brandon Live dot com. Like the website is still up. I just haven't touched it. So I got to talk to my my lady Nikki who uh, runs it for me and does all that good stuff. So we got to get that going again. Like whenever the next season comes out, mm -hmm. um, I'll probably have some of those kids on there uh, jump back on it. But we'll see. So what have you been up to this year? You said you've been very busy. So you know what have you been up to? Oh, just trying to stay out of trouble. You know, I live in Vegas, so uh, it's, it's a constant struggle day to day to stay out of trouble. But yeah, just you know, a lot of gambling, working, uh, and just like I said, just trying to stay out of trouble. Um, yeah, and that's the one. That's another thing too. Like if I get to be on another challenge, I think I I, I would always overthink it. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted to uh, be a certain way because I knew certain people were watching. But at this point, like I really just don't care. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> anybody's opinion or their perspective on me because I mean the people that know me and 
care and they know my core. They cause like every time I come home, every time I go home, I should say, uh, my my friends that I've known since you know forever would be like, man, why are you being so nice on TV? We know the real you. <laughs> so I, I think I'm a lot more comfortable now, just to, you know, kick back and have fun and say what I want to say, not think about it, and do what I want to do. So. But yeah, as far as what I've been doing is just staying out of trouble, trying to make money. That's it. That's good. Are you still a DJ? Yeah, I'm still DJing. Um, for the most part, I'm at Hard Rock every Sunday at Ainsworth, and then uh, mm -hmm. I do parties here and there. And so hopefully that'll take off. Uh, you know, it's the end of the summer, so you know things kind of die down. Well, I mean it's Vegas; nothing really ever dies down out here. But uh, hopefully between now and this next spring get a little mm -hmm. bit more work under my belt, make a name for myself, and then hopefully I can just DJ and that be my my career, my job. That's good. Okay, so like when you DJ, do you play like dubstep, or do you play like booty shaking music, or do you play like a mix of everything? I play anything that will heighten my percentages of getting laid. I'm playing. Oh, uh, no, my I, God. <laughs> okay. I'm messing with you. No, I'm, I'm pretty... Uh, <laughs> Thanks to my mom and my dad, I'm pretty uh, eclectic in my musical taste. But, I mean, if you've ever been to Vegas, most of the clubs on the Strip, they all play the same house, uh, trap, mm -hmm. uh, techno, you know what I'm saying? And so, like, Ainsworth is like a kind of a smaller bar or whatever inside Hard Rock. Because Hard, Hard Rock doesn't even have a club right now. So what I do, I got a lot of free reign over there. You know, shout out to Ainsworth. They let me kind of do what I want to do. And I usually play top 40 mixes, but I try to get in as much, you know, current hip hop and just you know good classic hip hop you can't go wrong with Tupac and Biggie you know you throw that yeah, in yeah I agree more. you cannot go wrong with those two yeah but I try to put stuff in there I, mean, I try to play as much hip hop and rap that I can get away with only because not not trying to stereotype myself because I mean you name an artist out of any genre I'll probably know who it is or I can name one for you uh, but it's like I'm trying to get away from what we hear all the time when we go to the clubs on the strip, which is the same mix by most DJs all the time. So mm -hmm. people want to hear what's popular, because those clubs they can tell you they'll tell you what to play, because they don't want to attract a certain crowd, which is understandable. They're there to make money. You don't want all the thugs in there going crazy and you know popping off the walker, you know what I'm saying, and beating everybody up. But in my establishment, I can kind of get away with it because it's not that big, and then you know the type of people that we attract, they can just they know how to party responsibly. So. But I, I try to play the most current stuff, the new stuff, not the same stuff you hear at every other club. Because, I mean, like, what's mm -hmm. the difference? I want you to come back to me. I don't want you to go to any club and hear the same shit. So. Yeah. Okay, so when you DJ, are there, like, a lot of girls around your DJ booth dancing? And have you ever taken any of them home? Nah, we don't. No, we don't do that. Um, <laughs> no, no. Well, I mean, it depends on the situation. depends on the situation. But no. <laughs> No, not, I, I try to stay away from that, especially because, I mean, they know where you work. So let's say the night doesn't go as planned. Mm -hmm. or let's say I don't want, They don't want to talk to me anymore, which is not going to happen. But I mean, I, maybe I don't want to talk to them. They know where to find me. So I try to not do that because you don't, you don't want to shit where you eat. <laughs> so yeah. I try to avoid that at all costs. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, to have girls around is always a good thing. And, uh, of course, they always want to come up and, you know, make requests and things like that. And, I mean, I'm all about it. You know, there's a tip mm -hmm. jar. That's what the tip jar is for. But, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, having girls around is always a good uh, a good atmosphere. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so do you DJ at any other venues besides the Hard Rock Cafe? No, it's not the cafe. It's the hotel, the hotel casino. There's a Hard Rock Cafe on the strip, and then there's a Hard Rock Hotel Casino. I'm at the casino, but... Um, I was downtown at Vanguard um, last year, and um, I'm trying to get on a Gold Spike downtown, which is one of my mm -hmm. favorite bars. If you ever come to Vegas, go downtown. Like, you're revamping the whole shit, and it's really, really nice. The strip is not the only good place in Vegas, but uh, you should do both. But, yeah, I'm trying to get on. But, yeah, pretty much anywhere, man. Like, my main source of um, getting my experience as far as DJing is just, like, friends will hit me up to go do parties and, like, events and stuff. And I, I kind of like that better. It's more personable. I can actually talk to people. I really can mm -hmm. play with different things that I want to play. Because like all like parties and um, like events are like a mixed bag of people. You never like I know what I'm getting into when I go to Hard Rock. I know what I should play. I know what type of crowd I'm gonna attract. But when you do a festival or an event, you got anywhere from 16 year olds up to 75 year olds. So I gotta play a little bit of country, a little bit of rock, some rap, mix in, you know, some Shaka Khan with a little bit of Alice. <laughs> you never know. So, 
but I like it. I like it better that way. Plus, it's like being outside anyway. So. Yeah. Would you ever do a wedding? And what kind of music would you play? Um, actually, I'm supposed to be doing a wedding um, next year. This lady, uh, I threw a friend back home in Arkansas. Uh, he hit me up and she was, he was like, uh, one of my good friends is getting married and she's a fan. And she saw that you're DJing on your Facebook or whatever, and she wants to know if you'll uh, do her wedding reception. But it's not till like, next August. But I'm mm -hmm. already like, So, I mean, I'm sure I'll probably do something close to that prior. But, yeah, it's kind of, kind of scared because I like, to, I like to get it going. Like, I like, you know, I hate saying turn up. God, I hate saying it. But, I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's fitting for this conversation. I like to turn up. And... I don't I don't know her so I don't know her style. I said y'all better send me a playlist or something because I'm gonna turn yeah. it. Into, we gonna have some a twerk contest. We gonna have, <laughs> I'm gonna turn it into spring break. <laughs> so they better let me know something quick because it might get a little rowdy. Okay, so you're from Arkansas. I'm also from Arkansas. So like, what part are you from? Well, I grew up in Jacksonville, right outside of Little Rock, where the Air Force Base is. To Jacksonville High School. I'm kind of upset right now, though, because I just found out that this year is the last year that my old high school will be the Jacksonville Red Devils. They're going to um, change it because they're consolidating because they have their own school district now. So mm -hmm. it's not going to be the, the Jacksonville High School Red Devils anymore. It's going to be something else they haven't decided on yet. But I got to get back, hopefully, before the end of football season so I can go, you know, see some old teachers and coaches and whatnot. But Grew up in Jacksonville, got a lot of family between Jacksonville and Little Rock. Went to school in Fayetteville uh, for college. Um, so my grandparents were in Grapevine. So, I mean, I kind of bounced all around, like, the little bit general central area of uh, Arkansas. But, you know, that's, that's, that's hometown right there. Okay. It seems like you're from, like, kind of, like, a somewhat big area. I'm from, like, a really, really, like, small city. So, like, what year did you graduate high school? Oh, see, now you got, you don't get me telling my age. I mean, look, I'm going to preface this with the fact that black don't crack, for one. Uh, I have great genes. I'm a mutt anyway, so, I mean, I, I don't look as old as I am. I'm pretty damn old, but I graduated in 2002. That old? It's pretty oh, damn old. Oh, my God. You're only, like, pretty, a few years old. older than me. Like, oh, my God. Yeah, it's pretty old, but, I mean, you know. <laughs> No, I graduated in 2006. We are so not old. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> my maturity level reflects that, but yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm old. All right, so we have another fan question, and it says, is there anyone from MTV or other reality TV shows living in Vegas that you see from time to time? Oh, well, Leroy lives here. Me and Leroy were roommates for a year. Uh, we just got our own spots like a couple months ago but uh, mm -hmm. Lee's like family like me and Leroy like, I see him every day uh, pretty much so um, so yeah Leroy um, I don't know if a lot of people remember Noor who was on Fresh mm -hmm. Meat my little Indian homie uh, he lives out here too actually I convinced him to move out here um, when I first moved here almost five years ago and we were roommates when he first came out me him and his his fucking wolf. Like, he literally has a wolf. Like, go to his Facebook page or go to his Twitter or whatever. Like, everybody thinks it's a, a husky. It's a wolf. Mm -hmm. it, it, really, it really is a fucking wolf. But I love that wolf, even though it scared the shit out of me from time to time. But, yeah, Nora's out here. Uh, Naya, she was living out here for a second. I don't know if she already moved. The last time I saw her, she was talking about going to L.A. So, I don't know mm -hmm. what's up with her. Um, but that's about it as far as people living out here. Now, another thing that I just heard the other day... I heard a rumor. I don't know if it's true or not, uh, but I heard they're uh, gonna film a third installment of Real World Vegas, and so we'll see. Oh. So if they are, me and Lisa we might have to pop up on them one day. <laughs> but we'll see. that's really really interesting. Yeah, yeah. I miss Nor. I want to see him on more challenges. Like, oh my god. Yeah, man. Like, I mean, a lot of people say that too. I don't. I don't know why. Uh, they haven't brought him back, but I mean, you know, that's that's all on production, man. They they pick and choose what they want. I'm hoping they pick my ass. Again. MTV needs to get it together, cause like yeah. I really want to see you and Nor, and like I I'm kind of tired of seeing. I'm not gonna be me to name names, but I'm, I'm gonna name names. Some of the people. <laughs> I'll name some names. Look, 
Johnny, I like you. I'm tired of fucking seeing you on every goddamn Oh, my family. God, yes. Oh, <laughs> but no, I mean, man, he's Johnny, already around like 10. Yeah, Johnny, cool people, man. Uh, like, the thing about it is Johnny, he's he's good at what he does. So, I mean, you can't really be mad at him. And he brings, he brings a lot to the table, like playing the game and just being, you know, the entertaining moron that he is. But no, nah, shout out to Johnny, though. But he, he cool people, but, yeah, damn, like, you, you know, it's like you going up. And you get ready to go play a game, and it's like, who are we playing tonight? Are like, you playing the Bulls? Like, fuck, I gotta go against Jordan again. Like, god damn, like, you know, let's get some new people in here. Like, cause you already know how it's gonna play out, but you know, uh, yeah. one of these days. Yeah, yeah so. I, I, I definitely want some new people. I mean, you don't need. There are so many of y'all. There doesn't need to be the same people on every single freaking challenge. Yeah, but I mean, at the same time, though, it's like, uh, as much as we do want new people, sometimes you you don't like change like it's when you got certain people that show up it's like oh okay I know what to expect with this person or mm-hmm. I want to have this person done. It's, it should be a good mix every time but because I mean let's just say there's another season and it's entirely a new cast like the, the previous season mm-hmm. when they brought in kids from Argue the One hated it yeah hated it. I'm like you hated like, it yeah I hated it I'm like because I felt like they were like intruding on something that they didn't have a part of, but it's a, it's a funny thing too, yeah, though, because just like yeah. just like with the uh, the real world kids starting off, you know, it used to be the real world road rules challenge, so just be road rules yeah. and real world. Then mm-hmm. they discontinued road rules, so then they had fresh meat. The first fresh meat with Kenny and Big Easy and Evan and all of them, mm-hmm. bring them in, and they had fresh meat too. My my cast came in, and so they're looking at us like, well, you weren't even on the real world first, and you just come come jumping in here. I was like, well, Kenny and them other motherfuckers wasn't on the real world either, so <laughs> why are you mad at me? So, I mean, it's kind of the same thing with the Ari the One kids, and then, you know, this new one that's about to come up is a whole different twist, too. And so it's yeah. just, I mean, you got to switch it up every now and then, but it does help to have those people that you already know because, I mean, it gives you a sense of, all right, I'm going to rock with it versus it being an entirely new show. Yeah. And I don't think anybody would watch it. Like, anybody yeah. Watch it? yeah, so. Fresh Meat 1 and 2 are actually my favorite seasons of the challenge because I like the fact that they brought in new people. And I want them to do more fresh meat challenges. Yeah, I mean, I think it would be, well, I think the way they did it, actually, uh, with the Are You The One kids was, it was good, only because they already had a fan base, too. Like, so, they're like, oh, we're going to yeah. do these two shows, versus it just being just totally new people. Um, so, but, like, the thing about it, a lot of people don't know, and I tell the story a lot. Which I don't mind because everybody's like, I know you get tired of answering the same questions. No, I don't. It's fucking fun to me. I like to talk. So, um, <laughs> but like all the kids that are on Fresh Meat, even the original one, um, we were supposed to be on The Real World. Uh, we had auditioned to be on The Real World or Bad Girls Club because Bunim and Murray, they do a lot of different yeah. shows on different, on different networks. So most of the girls were um, either supposed to be in The Real World or Bad Girls Club, and then the guys we were supposed to be on The Real World, or we had gotten far enough or made enough of an impression to where they called us back to be on uh, either Fresh Meat 1 or Fresh Meat 2. So uh, so I think we're, I, I feel like we're more, more connected a little bit versus bringing somebody in that's absolutely brand new or bringing somebody in from another show. But before they uh, discontinued Jersey Shore, mm-hmm. I, we were talking about it. I think it would have been dope had to have them on there. Brought them in. Oh my yeah. God! You imagine yeah. Snooki on a challenge? Oh my yeah. God! They make too much money, though. They 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 make too much money. Their their production company gave them way more money than they give us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So like uh, Teresa, Laurel, and Evelyn, were they gonna be on like the Bad Girls Club? I'm not I sure. I really Teresa never. On there. Yeah, I never had the uh, the full on conversation with everybody about what original show they're supposed to be on. If I did, I forgot. Mm-hmm. I drink a lot, but um, <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. I know. I think I think um, uh, I think Sandy might have was supposed to be on Bad Girls Club, or I'm not sure if she's a real world or Bad Girls Club. Sydney, who um, I don't know why they never brought her back either. Um, she, I think she was supposed to be on Bad Girls Club. I think. Mm. Tara might have supposed to been on Real World, but man, I'm, I'm not sure. I know I was supposed to be on Real World Cancun, um, and then that's pretty much all I know because I'm a big fan of me, so that's all I got. <laughs> okay, so we have another fan question. Is Hi. there anyone who hasn't done a challenge in a while besides yourself that you would love to see come back for one more challenge? 
Um, uh, I would love to see Cyrus. That's the homie right there. Um, Mark is real cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would definitely want um, Derek uh, Diesel. Yeah. Well, even 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 my my Mexican Derek too. That's my homie. Um, but now let's get to the real. Like you know, I like hanging around girls. Forget them. Um, <laughs> I, I need. I need Jen back in the game because she's just. I, yeah, Jen's That's a the homie right there, Jen, and she's fun to look at. But at the same time, she's she's really good too, and she's a good friend. Um, I definitely will want Melinda to come back because she's just sweet, and she definitely needs to be, get back on there. Uh, Paula is spitting out babies like a factory, so she's not coming yeah. back. Yeah, you know, Lucy's Teresa, pregnant too now. Yeah, so, and so is Jasmine. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but, but yeah, probably uh, Melinda, Jen, uh, Miss Katie, Uncle Katie. You know, she just had a kid. She too. just had a baby. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me see who else. Uh, that's about it, man. My boy Luke. Me and Luke are real tight. Um, on um, Fresh Me Too and on Cutthroat. That's my boy. Um, but other than that, man, outside of the people that that keep continuously doing it, um, those are probably be the only ones. Yeah, I want to see Darrell back on. Oh Instagram. yeah, Darrell! I forgot about oh, Darrell. Oh my man. god, I love him. He was, he was just out here a couple months ago. Him and his girl, man, we had a good time. Uh, we went out. We went actually. Nor he's the MC over at Hyde at Bellagio. So if you're ever in Vegas, go out at him at uh, at Hyde. But uh, we went and fucked with him over there, and uh, we had a good time, man. Like yeah, Darrell, he, you know, he's doing um his training and whatnot. So yeah, he, he's ready. I mean, I don't know if they've hit him up. They definitely should. Uh, and I need to hit me up too. That way, me and him can be on the same team. That way, you don't. Hook yes, my head. you two can like have a good alliance together. <laughs> now, if if you put me, Darrell, and Leroy on the same team. Oh my God! Get out of here! Get out of here! Get it's out of here! Over. Oh yeah. Oh, that's an amazing. That's a. Mm. Oh, like watch out now. <laughs> watch out now. I saw. I know that look. I know that. Ooh, What's man, that look? look? What is that look? Hey. Hey, don't don't play now. Don't play. <laughs> you high. I told you that. Look, hey, whoever's watching, high. this young lady is high. She ain't closed her mouth yet. I seen I seen all her teeth from the time we got on here because she is high. I'm not high. I'm just a giggly person. Well, that's good. We need more of you in the world. I know, right? Like, oh, my yeah. gosh. All right. Fan question. Yes. It says, where is Evelyn? She disappeared and doesn't have a Twitter or anything. I don't know, man. I haven't. I, I saw her a couple times after our um, our season. Hold on, my phone about to die. Let me plug this thing up. Uh, but I don't know. I, I haven't really kept in touch with her. I don't really know what she's up to or what she's doing. Um, I have no idea. I mean, she never really shook me as like a person that was really big into the social media stuff anyway, so I'm not surprised that she really can't be found. She's not as accessible as us other attention whores are, like myself. So hmm. okay. Yeah. So how did you get involved with M T V? Like what made you audition? Well I'd always been uh, a really big real world fan, like from day one. Um, mm-hmm. What was that? The, the the season that sticks out to me the most is the LA season. I think it was the uh, the second season with Tammy and David and Beth and all of them. So now I'm showing you my age again. But I wouldn't have known about it had it not been for my mom. You know, because I was really young then. I was like, fucking, what was that? Like ninety two, something like that. Yeah. I was only like, I was only like eleven years old, maybe. No, I wasn't even out. I was like, I was like. Like, yeah. Yeah, so um and I, I would watch Real World all the time and like mainly because of my mom. So I got kinda hooked on it and I kept saying, I'm gonna be on the real world, I'm gonna be on the real world. So like by the time I hit junior high is when like some more of my friends kinda caught on to it and they were like, Yeah, we could definitely see you on it but as confident as I appear to be, I'm very uh, uh I fear rejection a lot. So I'm like, if I go through the process, at the time you had to send in a VHS tape. You needed to like record yourself and send some shit in. Mm-hmm. Now, if I go through the process of making this tape, after all these people have been telling me you should be on it, I can see you on it, and they don't pick me, I'm going to be pissed. I'm never watching MTV again. Fuck everybody. That was my, my outlook on it. So uh, when I got to, let me see, 
college because the cutoff is 24. You have to be tw- you have to be 18 to 24 to be on the show, at least to audition. And I got online. I saw that they had a, an open audition, an open casting call in Little Rock. It was like maybe like three blocks from my house, from my apartment. And I was like, fuck it, I'm going to do it. So I submitted an application. They sent me back a little um, RSVP thing saying, you know, show up at this time, the whole deal. And I showed up to the open audition, an open casting call, and they picked me out of the first round, and then I made it to like the second round. And like, it's a long process, though. Like, it, it, it went over the course of maybe like two or three months. Mm-hmm. And then I made it to the finals of the casting part. And there's only like maybe maybe ten of us, maybe. And uh, we never got to meet each other during that that process. So they flew me out to LA, had a final interview with you know producers and the whole deal. And uh, I walked away thinking, yeah, I I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna be on Real World Cancun. And I got a call like a couple weeks later saying, sorry, <laughs> we're not gonna be able to use you. I'd already quit my job and all and everything. I was ready to go. And it was like, nah, but we well, we got something else in mind for you. Just you know. But we, we're not gonna be able to use you for this. And I'm talking about I was crushed, like you, like you wouldn't believe. And six months later, they called me back, and I was on Fresh Meat too. So it oh worked out. God. Yeah, yeah. But it was. I should, I should write a book about that process, man. Your boy was. I was depressed. <laughs> it was bad. But it was, it was. It worked out though. It worked out. Okay. So besides. Okay, speaking of the real world, have you been watching the newer seasons like Explosion and uh the Skeletons one? Um I watched some of Explosion only because uh Jay, cuz me and Jay we did um we did Spring Break together year before last. It was me, him, Knight, Kahuta, uh Nick Brown. Uh I feel like I'm forgetting somebody. But yeah, uh, so I I got caught up on it that way I could know who the hell he was. Mm-hmm. And, um, but yeah, and, and, and you know, rest in peace tonight, man. Like that was a a tough one last year because you know last November is when he passed away. I went to his uh, his funeral, uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, that was crazy. But um, but yeah, I watched some of Explosion, but I really haven't watched anything since then. I mean, I watched a little bit of Skeletons, but um, I think that one got like too out of hand. That was that the skeletons that, that that joint was it was digging in some people's feelings for real. So yeah, like what yeah. do you think of the their new themes? Uh, the the new themes that they're doing. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, it's you got to have good content to have a good show to have people watch it. I mean, you know, it's all about you know making money at the end of the day. So if nobody's watching, nobody's making any money. At the same time, you want to make something that's good quality too. So I mean, the creative powers that be, whatever they come up with, uh, if it gets pushed through, then I guess they're doing something right. They get paid to do that, and I don't. So, you know, and it's, it's interesting because, like, every year, I mean, every season, we're always like, what the fuck are they going to come up with next? Yeah. <laughs> it gets crazier every time. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's, it's TV. It's not, I mean, it's, it's real life, but it's not real life. Because you, you still can yeah. walk away from it and go back to whatever the hell you were doing, depending on what you did while a camera was in your face. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, I mean, it's it's interesting. It's always fun. I mean, sometimes it's a, it's a hit or miss. But, I mean, they've been doing it. I mean, Buna and Murray pretty much created reality TV. So yeah. um, they've been doing it right for, you know, I don't know how many years now. So they, they, know, what they, they know what they're doing. So I'm not even questioning it. They need to put me on their, their creative... Uh, they create whatever the hell they call the, the the office that makes up these damn scenarios for these shows. I can give them something. It's gonna be twerking involved. Oh, no. uh, Laura, are you gonna have like a twerking contest? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's that it's only right. I mean, I mean, what? I mean, you can appreciate a good twerk, right? I mean, it's hard not to look at. <laughs> With like. New girls, like fresh girls, or like you know, girls that we know from like the challenges, or like a mix. I'd probably have a mix. You know, it's gonna be more. It's gonna be a lot more competitive if you have a mix. You got somebody that you already know, and if you're voting, then you're gonna vote for the people you know, even if they ain't doing nothing. So the new girls gotta try a lot harder to get their name out, 
So I think it'll work out great. We need to talk. I'm gonna call Benjamin Murray tonight. Like, look, I got an idea. <laughs> Competitive twerking. That's you, a first. Hey, you need some. I need some. Uh, some sponsorship. Some ads to be bought. I need to check. <laughs> so besides the real world, like what other television shows are your guilty pleasure? Um, well, actually, I got the uh, the pleasure and the honor of uh, being on Brain Games, uh, like, what was it, like, maybe like a year and a half, two years ago. Uh, they were filming out here in Vegas, and they emailed me and hit me up and was like, you know, do you want to see you in the area? Do you want to come out? And I was like, hell yeah. So I was on Brain Games, um, Mystery Diners, which I don't even think airs anymore. I was on an episode of that, too. Uh, mm-hmm. And I just I just like those, those shows. Um my guilty pleasures, though, that don't involve me, definitely uh, loving hip hop. Wherever city they at, I'm no. watching. <laughs> I'm watching loving hip hop. It can be loving hip hop, Louisville, Kentucky. I'm watching it. Um, loving hip hop. I would also say, what's another one? What's it? See, VH1 is turning to BET. So no lord. So uh, anything on VH1, they ratchet ass. So it's definitely gonna be loving hip hop. What's the other one? There's something. Uh, there's another one I'm missing. Oh, Black Ink Crew. I like Black Ink. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I'm missing another one that's on there. The new BET. Um, uh, the Game Passes dating oh, show on that's, there. What the, the the flavor of love part two? That shit is so whack. Uh, but I mean. If you can get a check. Oh yeah, basketball wise, uh, they have that. But see, ain't no, ain't, they got one chick on there that's married, and it's still called basketball wives. Like, what the hell? Oh, and I'm oh, another one I saw the other day that I'm like really tripping off of is uh wags, wives and no. girlfriends of superstar celebrity, whatever the fuck. It is. Yeah. Man, that shit is of, so. Of like sports players, I think. Ah, uh, that shit is so ratchet, man. Look. And and it's it's such a uh, blatant ripoff of basketball wives and love and hip hop. But I mean, E, they're smart. They're doing their thing. They're making money. But that shit is. And, and what my boy was telling me he was like, man, it's like this is real life for real. Like, what you mean? He's like, all them niggas. Excuse my language. All them niggas that are playing ball, all they wives or girlfriends are white. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> but hey, what can you do? <laughs> Hey man, I love everybody, man. Hey, no matter the shade, you know what I'm saying. But at the same time, it makes a point. But <laughs> I think it's funny as hell. But uh, wags. And why would you even sign up for it? It just sounds so bad. Like yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. So do you watch like any scripted shows like uh, Empire or Scandal? How to Get Away with Murder? If I, if I catch them on a marathon, yeah. But I'm, I, it's, it's, it's hard. I have, I'm pretty sure I have ADD. I can't, if it's really, really good and I get locked in, I can do it, but I can't, I can't be waiting once a week. Like, I do it all at once. I, I can't just, you know, be like, okay, next week and I, and I'd rather, like, not watch a whole season and then go back and watch it all, like, in a weekend or, like, one day when I'm off or something like that. But, um, Dexter, I just finished, like, season six. I watched maybe like two seasons in like one night of uh, Dexter, even though that shit is old as hell now. But like that's my. Mm-hmm. But uh, I saw a couple episodes of uh, the first season of Empire maybe like a month ago, and it, it's it, it kind of I like it, but I don't want to watch this new season until I watch all of the last season. But I mean, there's a lot of shows I haven't watched. That everybody's like, you gotta watch this, like Sons of Anarchy. Empire is amazing. Like you've gotta finish it. It's, yeah. it's amazing. That shit seemed kind of corny. <laughs> I mean, some of it is kind of corny. And then my boy Doug, he's, I, uh, Doug Easterwood, he's on Facebook, going to school with him. Uh, I don't know if it was him or somebody else. I'm pretty sure it was him. He's pretty outspoken. But he's talking about how um, like, it seems to be trying to shove the gay agenda down everybody's throats. He's like, you know, and I mean, and I had a conversation with a friend the other day about, because um, I have gay friends, and I don't care. I mean, you love who you love, man. However you get off is how you get off. I don't care. Mm-hmm. But um, it's like now it's like just everywhere, and people feel like they have to do it. Like not not have to be gay, mm-hmm. but like they have to address it. They have to include it yeah. in everything. You know, it's like okay, I'm cool with it, but you know, that's like somebody walk. That's like 
a white girl walking around with a sign on her shirt saying, I like black guys. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't, you don't, I don't care if you're doing that. We can figure that out later. Like, you don't have to fucking tell me now. And don't be pushing your shit on everybody, like, because it's a cool thing to do. So the conversation that I had with my boy the other day was, is it, is it cool to be gay now? Is it like a trendy thing? Or is the fact that now that it's more acceptable, the people that were questioning it, it's easier easier for them to come out of the closet and like say, hey, I'm gay, no big deal. But my thing is like, it shouldn't have to be something that's announced all the damn, all the, all the time, you know? So mm-hmm. I don't know. Nor do I really care that much because I'm not gay. And that's all I need to know. <laughs> I don't feel like that show is like, you know, shoving it down our throats. I think it's just kind of like showing, you know, that it's okay to be homosexual. I love the show. I think it's amazing. I love everything about it. <laughs> well, I mean, I haven't seen it. Yeah, you know, that, I'm just going off what people have told me about it. Like, I have, I've only seen two episodes of the first season, so, like, I have no <laughs> real opinion on it. From what I saw, I was like, I can dig it. I mean, I think it's kind of over the top, but I like it. But, I mean, I, I just need to see yeah. the whole first season first. But, yeah, man, I should gay it up, man. Like, whatever makes you happy. Like, I don't, I don't understand why everybody wants to judge what everybody else is doing. Like, live in your world and do your thing. You ain't, if you're not gay, you're not gay. If you're gay, you're gay. Cool. <laughs> the end right, result's so going to be the same. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Another fan question, it says, how do you think your host parish would do in that twerking contest you were oh. just talking about? Oh my god. Oh uh, hell. Here we go. Well <laughs> I mean, I, I don't I don't know. I mean I could I could be very <laughs> vulgar about this, but I'm not. I'm gonna be a gentleman. Um I don't know. Uh it just depends on your rhythm, uh your 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 mood at the time of said twerking should take place uh, I don't know but I mean just because I want to give you a passing grade I'm gonna say you do great I'm, I'm gonna say <laughs> I'm gonna say you would do very very well at uh, controlling your, your your glutes as to uh, uh, to, to parallel with whatever, whatever whatever music you probably don't even need music you just get you natural you got natural rhythm you can just twerk that thing you probably twerking right now no one might even know it Twerking is not something that I do in public. It's something I do in private. You know? For, for that it's special in... someone. Yeah! Good. See, that's exactly. a good thing. That is a good thing. See, these girls out here be letting everybody in. They be giving previews to things that we shouldn't be knowing about. And now nothing's sacred anymore. So you keep that behind closed doors. It's a good thing. Okay. I'll definitely keep it behind closed doors. Good deal. <laughs> It's a good thing. So, have you met people from like other reality shows besides like the Challenge and Real World that you hang out with? Um, not that I really hang out with. I mean, like it's Vegas, so you always got people coming in and out. Um, mm-hmm. but you know, we've had some different events to where I got to meet uh, different people from different reality shows, like Judd from uh, Big Brother. He's he's super cool. We talk every now and then. Um. Spencer well, from Big Red, he's from Arkansas, so uh, we we chopped it up a couple times. Um, let me see, uh, Danny from uh, Bad Girls Club, she's uh, she's cool, uh, she's crazy, but she's cool. Um, but so I've met a couple of them before too. But oh, my boy, um, uh, why am I have? See, this is why. See, I stopped drinking for a while. I just I drink. <laughs> I drank for the first time in like a month last night, and today I went and had lunch and had a couple of drinks. So, mm-hmm. I, memories all up. What? I can I feel so bad. Oh man, um, he was on Amazing Race, and he lives on the East Side. What is it? Louis, Louis, Louis my guy. Louis Shavada. That's that is my dude. Uh, look him up. We talk on Facebook all the time. He, and he's a Dallas Cowboys fan. He's smart. Uh, but Louis real cool. But um, as far as other shows, that's about it, man. Um, and then Adam from uh, Are You the One? He's uh, mm-hmm. he's pretty. I met him out here a few years ago before he did that last challenge. But uh, and then okay, my boy Luan, Lu- Luan from Big Brother. Yeah, that's my dude, man. I, he came out here last summer. I saw him for a second, man. But like, 
I could call him right now. We haven't talked in a minute. I can call him right now. He'd be like, all right, well, come out. You got somewhere to say. Like, that's that's how we roll. Like, dude is super cool. Earl, uh, Earl Cole from uh, Survivor, super cool. Uh, so, you know, most of the people I just named are black. I'm trying to find all the black reality people. Ain't a lot of us on there, man. Ain't a lot. You know, we sprinkled. We peppered all up and through there. So we trying to we trying to keep it out there, man. But is well, you said Judd and Spencer, and they're not black, so they count. Yeah, they count. Well, shit, I mean, I guess. I mean, I, I want to just say I'm half of the stuff I'm saying. I mean, it's all true what I'm playing. Like ninety percent of it is just jokes. I, mm -hmm. Yeah, but no, I really, I really do try to check for the black folks <laughs> so on the on these shows. Is it really ain't a lot of us? So. Yeah. Do yeah. you watch Big Brother? Um, no. <laughs> I don't. I I I did. I watched some of it. I can't. It's. I just can't lock into it, man. Like, for one, they don't drink enough for me. Um, I mean, I think it'd be a lot more interesting if they let them party for real. Um, mm -hmm. Another another joke. I talk about alcohol a lot, and I really don't drink as much as I used to. So please, people, don't think I'm an alcoholic. But um, but no, I mean, I, I just I don't. I just don't catch it at the right times. And yeah, if you, if you miss two episodes, and it's like, okay, well, why are they bitching about this? Like, where did this come mm -hmm. from? Come back and figure it out. And I just. I just don't care enough to do that, and I don't yeah. want to invest myself in a you know a half story that I don't know anything about because then I'm gonna be like okay this is it makes no sense and then I'm gonna be mad and then I gotta break stuff and I don't have any money to replace it and it just come, becomes this thing and everybody thinks I'm crazy. And it's just weird. Can you see me moving? Cause I'm frozen on my screen. So yeah. Are you. Oh, I can see okay. you. Am yeah, moving, you're fine. Okay, because you're frozen and I'm frozen, but yeah. Then, then again, I do have an Android, so. Android. I am Team Android, not Team. Yeah, forget the iPhone, man. <laughs> but if anybody want to send me one, I take one. I mean. Oh my gosh! But yeah, we see and. And we get perfectly. Oh my god! But I, I guess I can see why you didn't really like keep watching Big Brother because the last few seasons have been kind of bad. It's been better in the past. Hopefully, it will be better next season. So I can see like why you didn't keep on watching it. Yeah. And the funny thing is though, like, uh, was it wasn't last year? It might have been year before last. Uh, I met like half the cast from Big Brother Canada. I don't know if it was like their first season or their second season, but like I love what? Big Brother Canada. Oh Yo, them, my kids, God. them kids was cool as hell, man. Like yes. uh, Tala, Tala was like cool as hell. Like that was she was like one of my favorite ones. And then like the other girl, I forget her name, but like she um has a nose piercing. Uh, really cute little girl. Damn, I forget her name. I follow her on Instagram though. Um, can't remember her name. But no, it was like a couple of them though, man. Like, and then we partied at um, went to the bank at uh, Bellagio, and they were just cool as hell. Like, but mm -hmm. then that was the same time. That was the same time I met um, Judd and Aaron and Spencer and all of them. And, you uh, met Aaron? Yeah. And Aaron, the first thing. Not nah, look. I heard about that whole thing that went down and what she said and the whole deal or whatever, and. She was she she was cool with me. She was cool to me, like, cause I I talked to Judd about it, and he was like, dude, it's not like that with her. Blah blah blah. I was like, well, yeah, you know, people talking, but I mean, I've been on shows, and I know how things can get mixed up and edited, and you know, skewed and the whole deal. So I don't judge nobody, especially off no TV show. You really can't. Um, so like, I was like, I I holler at her, you know, no big deal. Mm -hmm. And she was like. Yo, uh, she kind of like was like, kind of hesitant to talk to me because I think she thought that because they knew who I was, which was, was crazy to me. Like Joe was like, man, I want to be on the challenge so bad. Like we we watch that shit all the time. And I'm like, damn. I mean, because we're on cable, like we're on MTV. Like yeah. Big Brother, you ain't gotta have cable to watch Big Brother. That's yeah. why they're, they're 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 a lot more known than we are. So and I was like, cool. I mean, that was like a compliment, you know. So I'm like, cool, man. So like, I said, what's up? To we took a picture, the whole deal, and I posted the picture. And then I got all this shit about you took a picture with her, blah blah blah. <laughs> hey, she was nothing but nice to me, and 
that's all I can say. I mean, I, I judge people on my dealings with them, you know. So, may I, I mean, she might have been putting on because she might have been trying to backtrack and hold deal. I didn't get that vibe from her. And people say stupid shit all the time. So, I mean, if you're gonna like, you know, just throw somebody in the fucking fire off of one thing they said while a camera was in their face or while they were being recorded, then just think about all the shit that you say that you get away with and people think you're a certain way only because it wasn't recorded and played back to a million people. So it's not fair to, you know, fuck somebody over like that and just put that stamp on them and say this is what they stand for for one sentence they said. Unless you're Adolf Hitler. And then... No, oh my God. Then, you know, Adolf, he really just didn't have a leg to stand on with that. But, you know, he owned his shit. With her, she just fucked up. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I see where you're coming. What are you drinking? Uh, water. Are you sure? Is I'm that not burning sure. water or regular water? It's that fire water. You know what that is. You from Arkansas? It's that fire water. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm getting. I have a, uh, I have a kickball game tonight. So what we do at kickball, we drink. Drink. It's all I'm, yeah, I'll give. Yeah. I give myself one day a week now to uh, to give myself uh, a nice little celebration, and that's what we're doing right now. Cause I'm about, I'm about to leave in like an hour to go to this kickball game, and actually, it's one of my boys uh, last night. He's moving back to California, so we're having a surprise party at the kickball game. I don't know how that's gonna happen, but we're all bringing booze and pizza and shit. I tried you to get a drink mix. last night, so you don't need to drink tonight. It's too late. It's already started. But then I don't work again until tomorrow night. So I got all day to get up, go to the sauna, sweat it out, might run, take a swim, I'd be good to go. Okay. Okay. Before I let you go, I'm gonna ask you one last question. Uh oh. I know. <laughs> okay, so you seem to like women like a lot a lot. So <laughs> <laughs> Are there any girls from the challenge that you want to hook up with or that you have hooked up with that we just don't know about? Hey, man, whatever's on that camera is what you saw. That's uh -huh. what we, okay. What we right hey, whatever they, hey, whatever they showed is, is what happened. Okay. Yeah. All I about. don't remember you hooking up with anyone. I think I would have remembered that. No, I mean, there were rumors and so who said and she said and he said and <laughs> This, that, and the third, but you know, hey, if it, if it didn't, if it didn't make air, if it, if it didn't, if you didn't see it on the episode, it didn't happen. That's not true, though. <laughs> they don't show everything. Hey, man, that ain't my fault. They gotta get some better cameramen in there. But I'm just saying, <laughs> hey, if it, if it wasn't on that show, it ain't happen. All right. So, is there anyone you wanna hook up with or hang out with? You know. Uh, well, I mean, you know, there's this uh, rumor going on about me and uh, Melinda, but Melinda's engaged and about to get married again. But no, that's mm -hmm. my homie, though. We talk every now and then. Um, but, I mean, of course, you can't deny that she's just ridiculous. And then, uh, I mean, pretty much all the girls on there are attracted to an extent. So, you know, I'd be a fool to say, you know, one over the other. But, I mean, everybody except for Caitlyn. And for who? Caitlyn, because Caitlyn's not really a girl, so... Well, she is now, but just saying. <laughs> okay, I mean, I understand that, but it's still funny. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, so... You know. <laughs> we have one fan question. Is yeah. the cast always wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Wait, say it again. You were breaking up. And I think it's so crazy when you say fan question. I like that. Say it. Okay, go ahead. It is. Yeah. Uh, is the cast always afraid of what they're going to show on the shit they should have shown shows? Like, are they scared? Yeah, because of, um, especially the people that have done a lot of episodes, a lot of seasons, the cameras, we don't even really notice them anymore. So... We don't know what they were actually filming, what they were listening to, because we do have mobile crews. Like, we see the camera, like, all in our face. Like, you know, those are people that are actually holding cameras. We also have stationary cameras that are, like, 
plugged into the walls, it's sitting in plants, and then we're always mic'd up. So when you get drunk or too comfortable and you're sitting around just talking and shooting the shit or you're doing something, you know, that you shouldn't be doing or doing something that you think ain't going to, you know, tie into the story, then you get really, really relaxed. And when they have those shit you should have shown shows, you're like, fuck, I was drunk 80% of the time I was there. What do they have on me? Why are they inviting me to come and com comment on the shit they should have shown? Like, why do I have to narrate this scene and I don't even remember it? So, yeah, it's it's very scary because, you know, there's nothing else to do. When we have downtime, there's nothing else to do in those houses but drink. Mm -hmm. You go run, you work out, you eat. Because we only have two challenges a week. Like, And then if you don't get sent home... Unless they take us out, we're chilling and yeah. we're drinking. So once you get comfortable with those cameras being around, it's like, you know, there, there's no rules anymore. A, we don't have music. We can't read books. We don't watch TV. We can't get on a computer. We can't just pick up. Oh, phone. wow. Yeah, as soon as we They should there, at least let you have books to read. No, we're filming a show. They always tell us, we're filming a show. Like, we need to interact. You know what I'm saying? So. I understand it. I mean, I get it. You know, you don't want somebody. I mean, how how fucking cool would it be? Like, I I should download Periscope, and then I'm gonna you know just stream myself reading a book. I wonder how many people would watch that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like they know that. So that's why they get paid the big bucks, and they need to have us you know interacting with each other, and that's that's why they do it. But it is it's hell. It's fun. If hell could be fun, it would be being on the challenge. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because, I mean, I, I love it and hate it all at the same time. Are there, like, like mics, like, on the headboards of the bed and stuff, or? Yeah. No. Yeah. No, I mean, there's mics Mike, everywhere. Are they on 24-7? Yeah. There are mics and cameras that are on 24-7. But because we, the, people get smart and they'll try to sneak around and do stuff. And, no, they need, we, it's like. It's kind of like Big Brother, not as uh, it, Big Brother didn't have as many people as we have starting off. It's a lot harder to keep track of all of us mm -hmm. uh, to like make a story from week to week. But it's it, it's kind of like Big Brother in that we're always being watched, like all the time. Like we're always mic'd up, and if we don't have a mic on us, there's a mic next to us that we don't know about. So. But, I mean, it's good, though. I mean, that's what we signed up for. That's what you want to see. I mean, you want to know what's going on at all times, especially the juiciest stuff is the stuff that people try to hide. So if we can figure that out and get it on air, it's even better for everybody. Since there's mics, like, all over the bed and stuff, is that why you never hooked up with anyone on the challenges? Like, you don't well, want to get the... caught by the cameras? Well, no, I mean, uh, I've always had a, um, a situation at home. That I didn't want to mess up, so. Aww. But now I don't. So if I get back, <laughs> if I get back on, if I'm back on there, then it's whatever. But I mean, I, I really don't even. I mean, if I wanted to just go, you know, hook up with a whole bunch of people anyway. I mean, I'm in Vegas. I could do that anyway. When I go on the show, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good things to look at. But I mean, it's not as glamorous as it seems when you see it on, on on TV because I got to I'm I'm in a room with maybe four or five other people, half of which are girls. Mm -hmm. I'm sharing a bathroom with them. I see them at their best and their worst. More times they're worse. Um, so it's not anything that, you know, it's like if you get fast, it's like you're married to them and you're fast forward to the part where it's not all fun and games. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's like it's the, oh, I walked in behind you, you just took a shit. That's gross. I don't want to even be around you anymore. Like, oh, what the hell? Why is your hair looking like that? Uh, it's just okay. What what's on your face? Okay, I don't. Yeah, great. So it it becomes this thing where it's like not even a, unless you're drunk, you're not second or third looking like, damn, I might want to take that down. So, but yeah, like my biggest thing as far as why I haven't hooked up with anybody on the show is because I've always had something back home that I was figuring out and I didn't want to fuck it up and. Yeah, so that, that's pretty much it. But I mean, if I get back on, you know, there's really no nothing holding me back. But 
I'm not going in there for that. I'm going in there to try to get some money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if something happens in the meantime, great, but I'm in there trying to get that, that check. <laughs> so. And he do go on another one, and uh, Johnny Bananas is there. Are you going to try to align with him? And if he wants to, like, see you into elimination early, are you going to tell him to go screw himself? No, nah, I mean, it just depends on the, the format. We never know what the, the theme is until we get there. Like, that is one thing that people think of, like, the show scripted. Is, it's not at all. Like, and we don't mm -hmm. know. We don't, we don't know where we're going until we get on the plane. We don't know what the theme is until we get to where we're going and TJ tells us. Um, but as far as Johnny goes, like, Johnny and Lee are real cool. I'm cool with Johnny, but not as cool as, as Leroy and Johnny are at the same time. Me and Leroy are tighter than him and Johnny are. So I feel like it would only be smart for me if I if I were to do another one to align myself unless I didn't have to. Because ultimately I'm there to get money. I I want to be first, you know. So if you if you're ranking people, you know, Johnny's up there. He's 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 number 1. You know, he's one more than anybody else. Yeah. So if you want to eliminate competition and make it easier for yourself, who do you go for? At the same time, if we if if I can ride that wave to get closer to the end with him, then there you go. I mean, I gotta play it smart. At the same time, it just depends on what the theme is. Like if we're on the same team, then that's a no brainer. But if it's every man for himself, but if we can carry each other to a point and then it's like, okay, well now it's every man for himself, well then I've gotten to this point so far. Now I'll, you know, take my chances with, you know, if I get the power to send your ass in. I'm sending your ass in. So, this is a game, though, man. Like, this shit is not life or death. I, the people that annoy me the most are the people that really carry this shit outside of the game. Like, they sit around and daydream and and overthink it after we're done filming. Like, mm -hmm. I hate this person because they put me into an elimination on this TV show that I got paid to be on in the first place. So, I mean, it makes for good TV. It doesn't make for good uh, relationships, um, depending on how you take it. It's an opportunity is how I look at it. And then, you know, if you're prepared, you're good. If not, you know, you still... My thing is, but did you die? <laughs> <laughs> but did you die? So. Oh, my God. See, I told you everyone loved you because we're getting, like, a million fan questions. We have another one. Another one. Let's do it. Why has no one ever tried to get bananas out first or second to pop this big ego bubble? Because it's scary. Well, actually, um, I think the person that came the closest to trying to do that was um, was Jordan. Yeah. And uh, we saw how that <laughs> worked out for him. Yeah. <laughs> but... But see, the thing about it is you never know what the elimination round is until you get there. Um, I think it's uh, people are scared. They um, they don't want to rock the boat because, let's say, first challenge we do, I win. I have the ability to throw anybody in there that I want. Bananas, you're going in. When this motherfucker comes back, if he wins that elimination round, Guess who's the target? So you gotta kind of yeah. try to pick, you gotta kind of try to pick and choose when you want to pull that trigger. I don't. I'm a gambler. I don't care if if. See, but the thing about it, when we were on free agents, the challenge that we won, this motherfucker was on my team, so I couldn't throw him in. And then the next challenge, he convinced people to throw me in, which pissed me. I'm like, really? So. It's, it's, it is what it is, but it's like you gotta you, okay, you gotta give him respect first and foremost because you know he's good. He wouldn't still be around. He wouldn't have won as much as he's as he's won if he mm -hmm. didn't know. What he was doing. So you gotta know when to play your your ace of spades um, when throwing Johnny in, and it would help if we knew what the fuck the the, um, the elimination round was in because you could kind of gauge his strengths and his weaknesses off of am I gonna go at him right now? But it's all a gamble, man. I'm I'm down for it. But the reason that people don't do it is because a lot there's a lot of new people, and then there's just a lot of people that don't want to work to get to the end. They just want to ride it to the end. Mm -hmm. And if you don't piss Johnny off and you get lucky, you may be able to ride it as close to the end as you can, but you got to know that 
he's going to end up trying to get rid of you. Like, even his friends that are, like, quote-unquote friends outside of the show, he's thrown in. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, but like I say, it's a game, man. Like, that's like if we go to the gym and we're playing a pickup game of ball and, and we end up on separate teams. I'm still going to try to beat your ass, but then afterwards we're still going to leave and go get something to eat and we're still going to be friends. You know what I'm saying? So, but it changes when you got that amount of money on the line, though. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. But people are just scared of Johnny, and, and rightfully so. I mean, he has a track record to prove it. I'm not going to hate on him at all. But, you know, any given day, anybody can get got. Jordan and win every game. So. Yeah. I think it redo free agents. I actually like the idea of it, but I don't think it was executed properly because we're, like, not individual. Like, yeah. y'all are in groups. There was not a, well, I mean, at the same time, they had to do it that way starting off because there were so many of us, but yeah. once, I found out, once I found out what the format was, I was like, this is my opportunity to, you know, to get, to realistically get to a final. Mm-hmm. And then I don't know what the fuck happened. I still, I blame Swift. Cause it's bitch- it was <laughs> Swift! I blame wow, Swift. Because he voted you in. Twice! It was, yeah. No, see, the thing was, like, they, when they, when it, when it showed, it was like, edited differently, but what happened was that he let Johnny and them fucking talk him into um, voting for me, and then it was a tie. And then on the tiebreaker, he voted for me again. And then he, he was like, I didn't know it was... I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? I was like, how... Really? So, yeah, I, I was... I, dude, he's just... Oh, my God. And like, Because he was staying in the room with CT, Bananas, Leroy... Um, uh, some of the heavy hitters, and it was his first time. So even though he had been on the real world, he was still acting like a fan, like on some whole, like man, I'm in the room with CT, you know. And they would make fun of him all the time. Like, it was like really fucking him, like really like just throwing him under the bus. Like any chance they got, like they made fun of the way he ate, the way he, they said he had a lisp. It was like just really fucking with him. And I was the only one that was really like you know talking to him, talking to him because him and Jasmine had this thing going on, and yeah. him, him and Toy was cool. But uh, me and Toy and me and Toy was cool too. So we was both like trying to like talk to him and talk to them and like be all cool and shit. And like we had like real conversations, like not even about the game. And he went and did that. And I'm like, wow, like you you were sucking, man. Like you really fell for that that that. Oh my God, I'm I'm sleeping next to CT and, and bananas and, and Isaac. And I'm like, God, you are the worst. Like you. <laughs> Like, you ain't shit. Like, you a fucking fan, man. Like, not, not there's nothing wrong with being a fan, but you can't be a fan in the game. Yeah. Like, you got to think for yourself. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, but that was just, oh, that, that man, that shit was crazy. But, you know, it is what it is. It's funny. It's funny. I mean, God bless him. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so... Is there anything else you want to share? Like, you know, I follow you on Facebook and Twitter, and you seem, like, very reserved. Like, I have no idea what you're up to, which is why I asked you, you know, what are you been doing? So go ahead and, like, tell the fans where they can, like, find you on social media. Well, on Facebook, you just search Brandon Drake Nelson, and, yes, that really is my real name. I'm older than Drake and Drake's name is actually Aubrey. His middle name is Drake, too. He just goes by Drake. So, no, I'm not one of them people that be like, my name is Brandon, I'll bust you in your face, Nelson. I didn't like this make up a middle name. It's really my name, Brandon Drake Nelson. So, you can find me on Facebook on that. Twitter is Brandon D. Nelson. Um, what else do I have? Instagram. Uh, that is Brandon D. Nelson as well. Um, Snapchat? I do not have... Well, I, ha- I made one, but I don't use it. Like, I don't even... I got another phone, and then, like, I don't I don't, I don't even remember my password for it, so I got never used it. So I'm on there somewhere, but I couldn't tell you how to find it because I don't even know how to find it no more. So sorry, Snapchat. I might have to make another one. We'll see. Um, I do have a Vine that I made a long time ago that I randomly remember the because um, I got this new phone. I got the Galaxy S6. Samsung, send me a check. Um, so the the app popped back up. And I randomly remembered my password, so I'm on Vine too. I think it's Brandon D. Nelson as well. I try to keep it simple, mm-hmm. but um, 
but yeah, uh, if you are in the Dallas area, I will be in Dallas on October the 10th and 11th. Uh, I'm going to the Dallas Cowboys game on the 11th versus New England Patriots. I'm kind of pissed off, though, because Romo's hurt, Dez is hurt, Jason Witten's hurt. But I'm still going to have a good time. So if you're in Dallas and you're in that area, I'll be there for the OU Texas game on Saturday and then the Dallas game on Sunday. And, yeah, if you ever come to Vegas, hit me up. I will I mean, a lot of people will hit me up, and I'll meet up with them because, like, I used to work for all the clubs when I first moved here, so I really don't go out that much anymore. So if anybody comes in town, they're like, yo, let's meet up for a drink. I am down for it. I'm highly accessible. Like, I'm not – as cool as y'all think I am. And I'm not as tall either. Like I'm T V makes everybody look big. Like I'm in shape, but I'm not tall. So when I meet people, they'd be like, damn, you look so much big on TV. I'm like, man, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but we can go get this drink. We can go get this drink though. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so do you have any last words for the fans? Um, last words. Um don't smoke cigarettes and drink in moderation. Um, take chances like I did. I just randomly went to an open casting call and now I got people that want to interview me like you, which I really appreciate. <laughs> and yeah, man, just, uh, just don't be scared to do shit. I mean, nothing gets done if you're scared to do it. And I'm, I'm a big, big advocate of Oh, I can do it tomorrow, and I've gotten out of that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I get I get more stuff done. Just get up and do it. I mean, at the at the worst worst case scenario, somebody's gonna tell you no, and whatever you tried might not work. But you got to remember this: there's one question you gotta ask yourself, even when all else fails. Did you die? If you ain't die, you still got another opportunity to do some more shit. So, I guess that's all I got, man. Like, but it's it's. The world is what you make it. Take chances. Get on a plane. Go no. places. Do shit. No. That's, that's all. I, I try not to be too philosophical. All right. Oh. I want to thank you so much. So, I, oh. I just tuned to smile a lot, and plus you're one of my favorite people from us. I really Bye to me. You are breaking up. I can I can hear you kind of. Alright, well while she uh, uh, gets her camera situated, I just want to say thank you for joining us here tonight, Brandon. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with uh, Parish's audio, but we want to say thank you for joining us here on Swords uh, Real World Rehash. Oh, man, I appreciate you having me, man. Anytime you need me again, holler at me. Alright, thanks again, and have a good night. Have some fun playing kickball, and don't drink too much, because as soon as you try to drink and drink, you're going to miss that kick. <laughs> <laughs> Never that, man. I'm accurate, like a sniper. <laughs> All right, man. Have a good night. Thanks again. You too. Thank you.